Hello and welcome to another DCSD On Demand video tutorial. This is Liz Walhoff from the Cantrell Building in Douglas County School District. In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to take a regular read-only PDF and turn it into a form using Adobe Acrobat Professional. So when you open your PDF make sure you're using Acrobat Professional then go into View, Toolbars, and choose Forms. Once you have that there, you'll see you have this nice little text option. So you click on that, choose a section that you want to be fill inable. This makes your form essentially like the tax forms that you get from the RRS, where you can type in them and you can save and you can email it to people. So it helps you become a little more paperless if you choose. Once your field is drawn, it opens up this text field properties. We don't need this to be a multi line. Under appearance, I may want to go in and make the font a default size or color, and I'm going to say close if I want to. Now if I'm doing a bunch of text fields like I am here, it's almost sometimes better not to close that window, because then it just stays open and it's a little bit faster. So I'm going to change the default font size on that. Uh, scoot it down a little bit so I have some space. And then again, I draw another text box, change the default font size, and then here, where it says Clues, I'm going to make a bigger box, but this time I want them to be able to write more than one thing. So I'm going to make this, again, a certain size, but I'm going to go down to Options. It's the third tab over, and I'm going to choose Multi-Line. That gives me rights to do um, for people who are filling it out to write with more than one line. Another thing you should know about making these PDFs is that when you draw the text boxes, they really are boxes. So as I have this idea field here, I don't get to put a nice oval shape in there. It's still going to be a rectangular box shape, but since the box is not outlined in any way, it's not that obvious that it's a rectangular shape, and it's okay. Again, I'm going to enable multi-line, go down to my next space that I want people to be able, in which I want people to be able to enter text, multi-line again, go back to appearance, and set my font size. Now I sometimes click through them on the way back up just to make sure that I've made all the changes that I want to make, check my font size and so on. And now I'm going to close that box. In order to see what it would look like before I save it, I can go here to preview. At the top it looks like little glasses. When I click on preview, I can see on my upper right I have the option of highlighting fields. That lets me know where I've filled it out and it helps me realize if I've skipped a box. Then I can try going in and typing and see what it looks like, make sure that it's how I want it to be. After I've tested my fields, I can go to Advanced at the top of the page, pull down that menu, and choose Enable Usage Rights within Adobe Reader. The reason I want to enable usage rights in Adobe Reader is that I want my users to be able to enter in information, maybe even fill in the form part way, save that data, and then come back and edit it again in the future. This also enables my users to fill in their information, save the PDF, and email that right back to me without ever having to go through the hassle of printing out their form. The final benefit that I'm going to mention is that it does also allow you to um, digitally sign a PDF, but that's not something that we really end up using much in the classroom. That would be more of an issue for people who are in an office, for example, and had registration papers or whatever it is that maybe they needed parents to fill out. This has been another DCSD On Demand video tutorial. Again, this is Liz Walhoff from the Cantrell Building in Douglas County School District.